Hello, we're going to talk about stereoisomers today, which means you are moving along in organic chemistry pretty cool. Now I want to remind you about constitutional isomers so that you can see the difference between these two. Constitutional isomers, that means that you have two compounds that have the same molecular formula. They have the identical same number of elements, but they are bonded, the atoms are bonded differently. They're um, connected, bonded in different ways. Now a stereoisomer is going to have the same molecular formula, is going to have the same overall um, structures, not that they're bonded necessarily differently. What's different is the 3D arrangement, and I will show that to you. There's a 3D arrangement that changes. So that's the difference between constitutional, uh, the elements are bonded completely different, uh, where stereoisomers, it's the three-dimensional structure is different. What's the same for both of these is that they have the same number of elements in each compound. Okay, something hugely important. Uh, when we're talking about stereoisomers, this is going to focus on double bonds, and double bonds have restricted rotation. Now you've learned that the single bond, carbon-carbon single bond, those rotate, they spin. Let me show you an example. So this would be an ethane molecule right there. And this carbon, these are a single, bo or single bond between the two carbons that can spin, that can rotate, just depending on the temperature, how much it rotates. This I'm representing as a double bond. That purple I'm representing as a double bond is fixed. These cannot spin. The only way to make this move from this position to this position, literally, is to break the bond, put all the energy to break the bond, rotate it, and then have a bond again. <laughs> Should not take that much energy. Maybe I need to work out more. Um, you have to literally break that double bond, flip it, and then it's going to rebond. So it takes a huge amount of energy to change those. Should I try it again? Let's see. I'll be strong this time. Oh man, it still took some energy. There we go. <laughs> um, let me show you right here. Let's look at this 2-butene, that double bond right here. Those carbons are fixed. They don't rotate. It's not like they're an axle and they spin. They're fixed. They do not rotate. So it's a restricted rotation around that carbon double bond. Nice. Now, whenever you have two groups on each end of the carbon-carbon double bond, that mean, oh, and they have to be different from each other. That means that you can have two possible isomers. <clears throat> For example, here's my carbon-carbon double bond, and you're looking on each of these um, carbons, the right and the left of the carbon, you have to have at least two different groups. Well, I have a hydrogen and a methyl group, hydrogen and a methyl group. It's the hydrogen and the methyl that makes it different. Now, look at this right here. I have hydrogen, hydrogen on this side. There's nothing different. And here I have hydrogen methyl, or ethyl, excuse me. So that would not be, could not be a stereoisomer. <clears throat> you have to have two different groups from this side to this side. Over here, I have two hydrogens and one hydrogen. You've got to have something different over here in comparison to this side over here. So two different groups as you're looking at each carbon, at each carbon. Uh, next, the way we name these, we have two terms to identify the different geometries, right? There's two different 3D geometries. We have what's called cis, and that means that you have different groups on the same side of the plane, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, and then we have trans, which are different groups on different sides of the plane uh, for this double bond. Now, when I say plane, I look at the carbon-carbon double bond and I put a plane, like I'm putting a piece of paper right through that. I put a piece of paper right through that. If you have um, the same groups on, so you've got your, your um, I'm gonna call them substituents for lack of a better word, Notice my methyl and methyl are both on top. That is cis. Now, contrasting it, if I do my plane right here, notice looking across that plane, looking across that double bond, there are my two methyl groups. That's called trans. The way I remember this and what I tell my students, I think of that root word trans, uh, that Latin root trans being across, like transatlantic going across the ocean transcontinental, going across a continent. We're going across that double bond. And so that's going to be your trans isomer. So again, uh, looking at this uh, first molecule, let's name it 
with, and then we'll add the cis or the trans to it. We've got one, two, three, four carbons. So that's butte. I see that double bond, so it's going to end with ene. We have to tell the reader where the first carbon touches the double bond, and it's the one, two. It's the second, uh, is the second carbon. So this is two butene. Uh, but my two groups uh, that are unique, I should say, notice the methyl and the methyl are on the same side. So that's going to be trans. They're on the same side. Now over here, again, we've got one, two, three, four, a double bond on the second carbon. That's going to be a two butene, but these two methyl groups, I'm going to call them, um, connected to my double bond, they're on the opposite side of that double bond. Opposite side, trans, going across. So that's a trans uh, two butene. Now to contrast this, check out this. I still have one, two, three, four. I've got my four carbons. There's a double bond, yeah, but now it's on the one. It's on the one spot. So this would be a one butene. Now this has the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens as my cis two butene, trans two butene. However, however, because I have two hydrogens on this side, and over here, there's that one hydrogen, there's nothing different. I could move, I could swap those two hydrogens and you still just have two hydrogens. That's not a stereoisomer. It's not a stereoisomer. What it is, is a constitutional isomer. So notice, uh, compound one and two, those are stereoisomers. Same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens. The structure overall is the same, except we move one substituent from the same plane to across that double bond. So those are stereoisomers. Now this one, the two, one butene, is a constitutional isomer. It has the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, but its 3D arrangement is different. It's different. You have two hydrogens on this side of the carbon, and over here you have a hydrogen and an ethyl, in essence. So this is a constitutional isomer with compound one and compound two. Nice, nice comparison there. Let's look at another one. You might be asked, is this a stereoisomer? Can you have a cis or a trans? So if I'm looking at this, I would say, no, I can't have an isomer. You divide, in essence, the two carbons on the double bond in half, and you have to have at least two different, um, two different, again, I'm going to say substituents. You're going to have to have two groups that are different um, attached, bonded to each carbon. Over here, I have my hydrogen and hydrogen. There's nothing different here. There's only one. I've got one hydrogen. I have to have something different like a chlorine, a bromine, an ethyl, a methyl. Um, so this is not a stereoisomer because you've got two hydrogens on this side. You have to have something that's different in comparison to this side over here. Uh, next, let's look at this uh, one chloro one propene. So I've got my chlorine, um, hydrogen, a methyl in essence, and a hydrogen. Notice these two are on the same side. They're both on the top when I'm looking at that double bond. So this would be a cis. Now over here, I've got the chlorine, hydrogen, the hydrogen's up top here, and that methyl is down here. Notice that these uh, two attachments are going across that double bond. Because it's across, it's going to be the trans one chloro one propene. Now, how you do this in the skeletal structure, I wanted to show you really quick. You've got your chlorine up top, the double bond, and then you're going to have that methyl group. Remember, when you leave a line blank, it means that there's a carbon. So you'd have that CH3. Um, now on this one, you've got the chlorine up top, double bond, and then this carbon is down below, showing the trans stereoisomer. So there you have it, stereoisomers. Same number of elements. They have the basic same structure, except you're looking at the attachments. Are they on the same side of uh, the carbons, or do they go across that double bond? If they're on the same side, both up top from that double bond, which they could also be down below, as long as they're on the, in essence, same side in comparison to that double bond cis, they go across that double bond trans. All right, I hope that's helpful for you. Have a good day. Thanks for being here.